For all the saints who from their labors rest, who live and faith before the world confess thy name, O oh Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou wast there now, therefore transcend in my the Lord in God. In the well far fight, thou in the darkness, cheer the one true light. Alleluia, Alleluia.
all who join the United Methodist congregation are asked to support the church in four distinct ways, through their prayers, their presence, their gifts, and their service. Well, we all share in that commitment, there are also those who feel called to offer themselves in very specific ways in the life and ministry of the church. One of those special callings is a call to prayer. Over the past two months, a new group has been forming around the special ministry of daily prayer for the specific needs and concerns that are brought to them. Some of those requests are shared with the larger congregation and some they commit to keeping confidential but all are lifted into the light and love of God daily for help, healing, wisdom, and care. Sandy Lawson has graciously agreed to lead this new ministry. Other members are Kim Burke, Joyce Cummings, Sue DeMarzo, Bernadette Higgins, Sonia Lawson, Sherry Miller, Paula Riley, Brian Rogers, Mary Ann Sampson, and myself. Would the members of the prayer ministry please stand? Amen. And I ask that you remain, you remain standing and respond to the following questions with, I will with God's help. As members of Crawford's prayer ministry, will you commit yourself to pray daily for the requests brought to you? Will you keep in strict confidence the concerns when requested? Will you treat each request with the care and love due to every child of God? And a question for the broader congregation. Will you support this new ministry and its members with your own prayers, respect, and gratitude for their important work among us? Let us pray. God who hears and God who calls, pour out your blessing on these who have heard your call to pray. Strengthen their spirits as they lift heavy burdens to your warm embrace. Deepen their faith as they channel your love from earth to heaven and back to their own hearts. And through their quiet work throughout the day and night, may all who bring forward a concern rest in the certainty that you are holding them in the palm of your hand. In our praying, let us grow. In our praying, let us love. In our praying, may we all find peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And we go to from that to our time of broader congregational prayer. I'm going to read to you the names and situations that are on the prayer list that went out on Friday. Um, and then we'll go from that into the, into the pastoral prayer. We remember this day Ann Jampel, who's receiving chemotherapy for newly diagnosed cancer. She appreciates cards and prayers. For Stephanie Altavilla, Diane Gary's daughter and her family, as she and her daughters have tested positive for COVID. For Sandy Lawson's friends as they care for their 33-year-old son, Jeff, who's battling a rare and serious illness. For Mercedes and Doug Sampson, sister-in-law and brother of Mary Ann Sampson, as Mercedes is facing open heart surgery in early November. For John and Anita Garrod's friends battling cancer, Helen, Dan, Mary Kate, and Mary. For Brad Brewer, Dot Pike, Sherry Pike, Barbara Simonson. For the friends and family of Miriam Maracek as they mourn her passing. For Meredith Ellis' daughter in law, Cassie. For Brian Rogers' mother, Mary, and we celebrate her 100th birthday. Bernadette Higgins' friends, Lucia Lyons, John Rhonda Bennett, Leandra Ellis, and Joan Irons. For Tom McGee, for Tuesday's election and for peace. For victims of the long and difficult hurricane season. 
for victims of the wildfires in Colorado and California, for victims of racial bigotry and injustice of all kinds, for healthcare workers, first responders, and all who are on the front lines, for Bishop Devadar, for the Open Spirit Task Force, for our denomination as the United Methodist Church, for all the men and women serving our country at home and abroad. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we've named some concerns before you, but there remain so many in our hearts, in our world. We're aware of some for others, we have no idea. God, we lift them, we lift them all from the depths of our heart to the heights of your love. For healing, for help, for care, for comfort, for peace, for justice. God, sometimes it seems that the world is beautiful and glorious and that has shown forth in the colors of the trees in the fall. And yet sometimes we feel the cold and the chill, the fears and the, and the anxieties. And it's a toss up on which one of those wins on any given day. Give us hope, precious Lord. Give us peace in our hearts. Give us love for one another. Enfold us in your peace. Motivate us. Give us courage to stand for those unable to stand. Give us a voice for those who are unable to speak. And may we always have ears to hear what your spirit says to us and to the church. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I wanted to reflect with you today. Um, it's, it's a tough time right now, <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed. Um, the world is on edge. We are on edge. There's pandemics and divisions and elections and, and snow and <laughs> everything. Um, and it's hard. And so as I, as I tried to think about what to share today on All Saints Day in this time, I decided to just share, rather than preach, you get sermons next week and the week after that, but rather than just preach, I wanted to share with you the one thing that I know without a shadow of a doubt. And I share that today um, because it was 40 years ago at midnight tonight that I learned that one thing. Forty years ago, I had just, on this day, I had just graduated from college in June and I was back at home. Um, 
waiting for my, and planning for my marriage the next summer. I had just started my first ever real grown up job um, in September. And so I was, I was home living with my parents. Um, my brother and his wife had moved to an apartment on our property over the garage. They were already, they got married before I did. And I was, I was in bed. And I woke up at midnight to the sound of my mother's frantic voice on the phone saying, I can't wake him up. I can't wake him up. I can't wake him up. I will never forget the desperation in her voice and how frightening it was to see my mother, who was always so calm, cool, and collected, be desperate. And I, I ran down the hall into their bedroom, and my father lay in the bed. And I had seen dead people before but they'd always been sort of fancied up at the, at the funeral home. But I knew when I saw my father that he was, he was already gone, whatever they, whatever the paramedics said when they got there. And so I, I knelt down, I was still at that point very, very much sort of a, a literalist in my biblical interpretation and a fundamentalist in the way that I I approached my faith and I said, well, God, you give me anything, you know, pray and your prayers will be answered. And so I got down on my knees beside his body and I prayed for his life and prayed for, prayed for his resurrection. And as I, I sort of felt myself going kind of over the edge into hysteria, if you will. Um, and as, as that was happening, even though my mother was downstairs waiting for the ambulance to come, and I was alone in the room, and I felt a hand on my shoulder, and I heard a voice say, no. And in that moment, I felt an overwhelming peace. It was a peace that truly passes all understanding. It was, it was years later that my mother heard me tell this story as I preached about it, and she came up to me and said, I felt it downstairs at that we've never shared that and she said i felt it downstairs waiting for the ambulance and so i've been told no and i opened my eyes and my father's eyes which had been open in an, the dead glassy stare of death before that were closed and i knew i known people, including my high school science teacher, who had these near-death experiences, and that was very much in my in my head, and so I began to talk to my father. I said, I'm looking up, like, in the corners of the room, I said, you know, I know you're up there somewhere, and you came out, all these stories say you came up out of your body, and you're up there floating around, um, and so I said, it's okay. It's okay for you to go. Um, if you want, we'll miss you. I'll take care, Mom. That's all right. You can go. And in that, in that moment, it was, it was sort of like the parting of a veil. Is the only, not, nothing I could see visually, but it was something that in that moment I knew in a way that I've never known anything before or since. And what I came to know was that love is the only thing that matters. That loving relationship is it. That's, that's the sum total of what matters on this earth and in this life. 
and that and my father had come to learn that while we were raised in the church we pretty much lived in the church and my parents were had various officers and all kinds of things but my father didn't really come to faith until about a year before his death he was 47 when he passed that night and he had come to know first corinthians 13 um, was something that was read at his funeral and that he had come to know but i knew it much more directly that night that love was all that mattered and being able to love each other however easy or difficult or complicated that was that that was the thing that was the only thing and I knew it so strongly that it was hard for me to go back to work because I was working at the time at a rare book library at Brown University and I just couldn't shake the fact that this didn't matter. Here I am helping to care for old books and people doing research about what they contained and um, it was I wanted to just run in and sort of do a Jesus in the temple and overturn the, <laughs> overturn the displays of books and say it does not matter none of this matters I wanted to run down the street and say it doesn't matter none of it matters loving each other is the only 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 that matters. And it took probably a month for that the sense of that that intense knowledge that came to me that night to fade enough that I could live reasonably and practically in the world. Because all I wanted to do was run around and shout, but that doesn't matter. Stop that. That doesn't matter. Put your focus, put everything you have on loving each other. That's the only thing that matters. And so as I thought about where we are, um, where we are right now as a church, as a country, you know, as a denomination, as, as a world, they... You know, we debate about all kinds of things. We debate about policies and people and um, theology and this, that, or the other thing. We've got a bazillion different Christian denominations, let alone all the religions in the world. And everybody's tense and worried, including me. And I thought, well, what's, well, we're here in this time. What's the answer? And then I thought, well, it's, it's the answer that I was given this day at midnight between all saints and all souls. That love is it. That's what matters. And to the degree that we do anything that decreases love, we are working against the world. And everything that we've got to hang on to each other no matter our political persuasion, no matter what other conflicts we have between us, we have got to love. We've got to love each other, we've got to hang on to each other with everything that we have. Because that is literally the only thing that matters in this world. The rest is a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And so I bring to you God's love, my love, and encourage us all to love one another. Amen. We're going to our time of communion. So I invite you to either take out communion elements if you drop them on the tables or some little single serving 
communion, um, cups and a wafer. So if you didn't, if you didn't bring one, I invite you to to pick one up and to notice if you're using those. Some didn't notice before. There is a wafer that's on the very, very top. You peel away one layer. There's a wafer, and then you peel away the second layer, and then the juice is underneath that. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. With your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those we name before you now in our hearts. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Amen. Now comes the time to name the saints. And I'm going to begin with those saints from Crawford who have passed in 2020. And then I'll leave a spot for you to name those that you may, either that I have missed, which hopefully aren't, aren't any, um, or that you want to name yourself uh, from your own family and loved ones. Miriam Mansell, Eleanor Bormuster, Jack Mayfield, Diane Gary, Sean Landers, and we remember now those who have been memorialized or honored on the various plots that are in and around the church for the trees and the bricks. Of course, the whole church is named in memory of Frank and Winifred Crawford. Frank Crawford was born in 1875 and died in 1967. Winifred Crawford was born in 1875 and died in 1925, a year before the completion of the current building. And these are in no particular order, other than the order that I found them. The sanctuary carpeting was given by Mike and Patty McEwitt in memory of William H. Sloan, Patty Mac's father, All Saints Sunday, 2002. The exterior lighting is in memory of Robert W. Armstrong. From the 1926 plaque right there in the narthex, to the glory of God and the grateful acknowledgement of the many generous gifts and of those inspired memorials this tablet is placed. The bell in memory of John C. and Lucinda E. Mason, two of the founders of this society given by their children and grandchildren. The organ in memory of George E. Henry by his wife Bertha A. Henry. The tower clock by Alice L. Kennedy in memory of her grandparents. Cyrus and Leonora Houghton, and her mother, Cordelia August Shatter. The baptismal font in memory of Irving Stevens Palmer by his son, William I. Palmer. The communion table in memory of Susan Ann Puddle by her son, J. Frank Puddle. The pulpit Bible in memory of Reverend and Mrs. John H. Mansfield by their daughters, Emma H. Mason and Bertha M. Freeman. The auditorium clock in memory of Charles A. Dodge by his wife, Nellie M. Dodge. The lighting fixtures in memory of Elizabeth A. Celia by her son, Nelson A. Celia. The pulpit furniture in memory of Thomas Morris by his niece, Emma Charlin. The altar chairs in memory of Reuben C. Hawes and Grace Hawes Gray by Rachel Hawes and Mabel Hawes Carter. A gift in memory of Jacob F. and Mary H. Emerson, devoted members from 1894 to 1901, by their son, Fred L. Emerson. A gift in memory of Howard Carver by George K. Higgins. A gift in memory of Eliza Dodd by her sister, Ann Dodd. A gift in memory of Eliza Sachs. A gift in memory of Elizabeth Maynard by her husband, William Maynard. Another plaque to the glory of God and in loving memory of Vincent and Norma Clark. The Petroff Baby Grand Piano is dedicated March 29, 1999. Like the Winifred L. Crawford Room, mm. December 11, 1924, the year before her passing. The Durland Library in honor of Stanley W. Durland, 1924 to 2017. 
Another track to the glory of God and in loving memory of Vincent and Norma Clark, the Memorial Garden was dedicated June 10, 2007, and listed under that are Tim and Linda Baba in memory of Leona Baba, Mandy Barnsfeather in memory of Fred and Dorothy Munson, Joan Brown in memory of Richard and Shia Brown, Kim J and Catherine Burke in memory of Robert Christie, Warren and Carol Buck in memory of Karen Buck, Bill and Joyce Cummings in memory of their parents, George and Ruth Ann Doreen in memory of Mildred V. Thornburg, Eric Deepy in memory of Richard Deepy, Barbara Fickett in memory of Fred Fickett, Kate Fizzoli in memory of Carolyn and Donald Church, the Grinnell family in memory of Genevieve Grinnell, Donna and Michael Goodman in memory of Max Goodman, Janet Herman in memory of Ben and Audrey Herman, Peter and Joanne Hobson in memory of Bertha Hobson, Elizabeth Knight in memory of C. Energy Knight, Roy and Sandy Lawson in memory of loved ones, Sonia Lawson and family in memory of Bob Lawson, Frank Leathers and Rosemary Monk in memory of loved ones, Carolyn Morris in memory of Royal Morris, Anita Meyer in memory of loved ones, Tad and Sandy Olson in memory of our dear parents, Gay Plungas in memory of George and Joyce Lance Plungas. Stephen and Susan Powers in memory of Eunice Chase. Eunice Chase. <coughs> Madeline and Carol Regan in memory of the Reagan and Stoner families. Red Hat in memory of Claire Jesus. Joan Ross in memory of Alan Ross and Beatrice and Ralph O'Neill. And then for the trees, and you'll see these posted on the trees. The red sunset maples are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Ben and Audrey Herman by Janet Herman, June 10, 2012. Howard and Muriel Wilson by Laurel and Stephen Wilson, June 10, 2012. Chris and Elaine Anderson and Pete Ruth and Rick Reed by Pamela and Christopher Reed, June 10, 2012. George Landers by the choirs of Sean Landers, July 11, 2013. To the glory of God and in honor of the ministry of Reverend Eric M. Dupey by the Church School, July 11, 2013. The Green Mountain Sugar Maples were given to the glory of God and in honor of our parents and children by Rosemary Monk and Frank Leonard, July 11, 2013. Ray and Eunice Chase by Stephen and Susan Powers, July 11, 2013. To the glory of God and in honor of Joseph, by Peter and Joanne Hobson, June 12, 2012. The Red Oaks are given to the glory of God and in honor of Heather Baba by Tim and Linda Baba and Martina Baba by Tim and Linda Baba. You'll find in the parlor the crowning of Esther Tapestry and the upright Steinway piano were received by the church in 1977 as a bequest from the estate of Beatrice F. Blake, who was born in 1890 and died in 1976. The dishwasher was given by Ruby Brown White in memory of Charles H. and Florence M. Brown and Paul M. White. Gifford Hall was named in honor of Allison B. Gifford, minister of this church from 1918 to 1925. The bricks in the playground largely celebrate the United Methodist Nursery School that was here for 50 years. We smallest ones had so much fun. Thank you from the two day class of 2001 to 2002. With thanks to Mrs. Hammond, Mrs. Casey, Mrs. DeMarco from the 2001 Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday class. Love and thanks to our wonderful UMNS teachers. The day four of class is 2001 to 2002. Thank you, God, for daughters. In gratitude for Rachel and Anna Wolverine. Thank you for the world so sweet, the Demarzos. In memory of Pop-Up by Sammy, Maddie, and Lindsay Houghton. 
Our gratitude to Steve DeMarzo, UMMS director. Thanks for a great start, the Murphy family. A gift given by the Breakfast family. In honor of Mary Ellen Holmes, cast director, UMMS, from 1988 to 1993. Happy memories. Love, Kate Lynn and Kyle Riley. Happiness is to laugh and learn at UMMS. Thank you from the Antonovich kids. God bless America, the Blue Family, 2001. Love to our teachers from Catherine Landis and Miles Walsh Crew, 1999. LRW, 2000. Ellen Henry Nathan. Loving parents, Howard and Muriel Wilson. Thanks, Megan and Brian Doe. Thank you, UMMS, Emily, Trevor, Jessica, Jackie, and Connor Doe. MMAW, 2002. To the teachers at UMMS that have enriched our children's lives, the Lyons family. The Wiley family, Peter and Nancy, Devin, Benjamin, and Blaine. Swing high and reach for the sky, Lindsay and Cole Van Gelder. To UMMS teachers with gratitude and love, from Alexa and Andrew Sadisky. Thank you for the fun-filled days, past, present, and future, the Mikitches. Thank you, UMNS teachers, Hadley and Camden. Have a blast, we did. Lily and Wyatt Midnight, 2001. <laughs> Shaw, Shaw W. Taylor, December 14th, 1998. Ashley L. Taylor, July 1, 2000. Love, Mom and Dad. The Hennessy family, Sarah, Megan, Daniel. From this place we went with joy. Andrew, 98, Hannah, 2000, and Rachel, 2003, Sarah. Nancy and Brian, Kate, Anne, Monica, Rose, Clara, Ray, love, Grammy. Can we build it? Yes, we can. The Farron Box. Thank you, UMNS. Braylon Tyree. Thank you, UMNS, Jack and Devin Tyree. For Kate, Monica, and Clara Canva. With love, Pa and Barbara. UMNS, we love you. The Fuske girls, Bradley, Mel, and Mia. Come play with us. And the Crawford Memorial of the United Methodist Church. And before we go to the last one, I want to just Invite, invite everyone to thank Sue and to celebrate the wonderful ministry of 50 years with the United Methodist Church. And the last one, I would never have gotten had Sherry not come in and risked life and limb to take a picture of a plaque on a miniature golf course that is currently sitting piled up in the boiler room. And we didn't know what it said on that plaque, but she leaned over and was able to grab a picture and it says, the miniature golf course constructed by Warren Butt, May 2005, in memory of Bob Lawson. <laughs> Bob was a golfer. <laughs> 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 and now I'm going to invite you to get up and move around. So as we mentioned, we have a to take maybe 15, 20 minutes to visit the trees. You can visit the bricks there, which are right at the entrance to the playground, which the Eagle Scout project moved those bricks, so they're now at the entrance, at the new entrance. Um, think of the people in the trees as you, as you move, tell at least one other person about someone who helped shape your faith. And when someone tells you that, respond to them with, thank you, God, for that person's name. 
I invite you to take a butterfly from one of the jars, inside or outside, as a reminder both of those fake commitment and your own. And also, in, there's an extra piece inside. You'll find either if you are going in the side entrance or the front entrance, there are post-it notes and pens. And as Hebrews tells us, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and there's no day that we remember that more than on All Saints, All Saints Day. And so I invite you to write, use as many little post-its as you want. They're in separate little packs, so you can take one. Um, to write the names of saints who have been important in your life and to stick them on the church walls anywhere around. And we'll, we'll capture those on, um, in photos or on videos. A poem from John O'Donohue for lost friends. As twilight makes a rainbow robe from the concealed colors of day, in order for time to stay alive within the dark weight of night, may we lose no one we love from the shelter of our hearts. When we love another heart and allow it to love us, we journey deep below time into that eternal weave where nothing unravels. May we have the grace to see, despite the hurt of rupture, the searing of anger and the empty disappointment that whoever we have loved, such love can never quench. Though a door may have closed, closed between us, may we be able to view our lost friends with eyes wise with common grace. Forgive them the damage we were left to inherit. Free ourselves from the chains of forlorn resentment. Bring warmth again to where the heart is frozen, in order that beyond the walls of our cherished hurt and our chosen distance, we may be able to celebrate the gifts they brought, learn and grow from the pain, and prosper into difference, wishing them the peace where spirit can summon beauty from old space. Amen. Go in peace.